when it comes to displaying my work, I need a website that does exactly what I want. Find yours at squarespace.com. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about the differences of using RAW file format as your shooting mode uh, compared to using JPEG as your file format for capturing your images. Now, on your digital camera, you will have the option to uh, select different modes uh, for recording or capturing the data. And down here, you can see uh, how I can select the mode RAW mode or move it across to RAW plus large, uh, RAW plus uh, medium one, medium two, and small. And that is combining the RAW mode with uh, JPEG modes. Or I can select to shoot in JPEG large alone or medium one, medium two, and small JPEG sizes as well. So what are the differences of shooting um, using those different file formats? Well, let's try and give you a little bit of an outline first of all before I show you on the computer. Basically, raw mode um, is the best mode to work in if you want to capture the maximum amount of information in your picture. And by information, I mean the maximum amount of data available for you to use to create the best output um, final photograph. JPEG mode uh, allows you to capture an image uh, that is contained and compressed so it takes up less space but it also unfortunately means that there isn't as much information in that image that you can extrapolate to uh, create a better final output from. So let's have a look at um, the two images, a raw image and a JPEG version and show you a little bit more uh, about what I mean uh, about getting more information from the file. Here I'm using some uh, software, uh, this is Lightroom, uh, there's other software available, the software that comes with your camera. Um, those software, uh, those types of software are designed to allow you to get the best out of raw image files. And I've got a raw image file, this uh, shot that I took here of this uh, lovely flowing river with this vibrant green moss here, uh, and that's the original raw file format. Now what I've done, I've also made a JPEG of that image from that file, I've just made a straight JPEG conversion and saved that as a JPEG. And I, uh, as they are at the moment, both pictures are identical. But what I'm going to show you now is how you can get so much more information out of the raw file than you can get out of the JPEG. So let's have a look at that. First of all, I'm just going to zoom in on this area under the riverbank there where it's quite dark. And I'm going to do the same on the JPEG here in Photoshop. And let's zoom right in on that area there. Let's just widen that out a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do in the JPEG is I'm going to try and lighten that image to get as much shadow detail out of there as possible. So I'm going to use the curves mode. Um, which allows me to control the exposure and allows me to um, basically adjust my exposure levels. And I'm going to lift up the curve to try and pull out any detail. Now you can see I'm making the image lighter and brighter. You can see all that grass is burnt out there. But I'm not really extracting any more data or information from that shadow area. So we can see how even 
after bending the curve to brighten the image up. You can see how much I've brightened the image all the way up there. I've still not captured any more shadow detail out of that shot. But let's look at that if we do the same on the raw file. So if I go back to Lightroom and I click in on that area, let's just move that across. I want to keep the uh, Photoshop file uh, visible off to one side here if I can so we can use it as a uh, direct comparison. Let me just say OK on that Photoshop one. We've got that there. OK, now I'm going to go into the fill light mode and this is a way of pulling out detail in the shadows. And you can see there, look at that, I'm lifting up the shadow detail. Now look at that, look how much extra information I've got out of the picture there by using fill light compared to here where I can't see anything except blackness, okay? So that data is there in the raw file. It's captured in the raw file. It's not visible to you when you've got it at the correct exposure. But by using the functions of raw software, you can get that data, you can get that information out. Now I did that using a fill light command, um, but I could have also done it by increasing the exposure level. And even that gives me a better result than I was getting on the JPEG file. Uh, but I did get a better result by using the fill light command to bring that detail out. Now, at the same time, if I just put the exposure back to the correct level and I use that fill light command, look at the difference here at the top of the riverbank, how on one shot, I still have the correctly exposed grass visible correctly, but on the other shot where I tried to raise that detail out of the shadows, all of the midtones have now completely burnt out. So you can see there, a clear um, demonstration of how we can get more detail out of the shadows. But it doesn't just stop with shadows. You can make effects to the coloration of the image, uh, shift in color balance, and other parts that you can adjust on the image that you can do far more with the raw file format than you can with a JPEG. The other area you can do it with is highlights. So let's have a look at highlight mode. I'm just gonna put that fill light back down to zero. And let's move up to this area of highlights here where we've got the, um, the foliage and the trees and the light shining through. I've just taken the JPEG, uh, the JPEG image back in the history to how it was. So let's just zoom out so you can see that. And I'm gonna zoom back in on the same area that we've got um, showing there on the raw file. Now, if I wanna pull the detail down, bring the exposure down to try and get some of this detail here, some of this foliage um, recorded better. Let's just bring up curves again, which will allow me to adjust the exposure levels. And I'm going to pull my curves down to see how much detail I can get. Okay, now I'm pulling down. The image is starting to sort of get a little bit destroyed and decayed. If I zoom out, you can see how the rest of the image is now very dark in me trying to rescue some data or some detail out of those highlight areas. But if I go into the raw file and I use the recovery function, I can bring back a lot of detail out of those highlights. And if I combine that with exposure adjustment, look at the difference in what I've managed to salvage out of the highlight detail in the raw file compared to what I could salvage out of the JPEG file. And also if we look at the overall image, I've managed to salvage that detail out of the raw file without unduly or greatly affecting the rest of my main image compared to what's happened there. Now, that fantastic ability to adjust the raw file to pull out sections of detail, highlight detail or shadow detail or change various colorations or color balance means that you can take your raw file and create several different versions of it. You can create a version where you've captured the information for the highlights. You can create a version where you've captured the information for the shadows. And then in Photoshop afterwards, you can take those separate images and you can combine them and blend them together using layer masks to create one final image that has all the detail that you want. So whilst raw files take up a lot more information on your memory card and a lot more information on your computer, a lot more memory on your computer, uh, JPEGs offer you uh, a more condensed compressed image file but without the ability to get the best out of the image file. Um, so if you're shooting 
to get the very best out of your photos, to get the very best final image or final print, then I'm highly recommending uh, you using RAW as your file format of choice. My passion is photography. Whether shooting for clients or teaching students, the excitement of great photography never gets old. Check out my website for free training, a complete range of courses and even photography workshops. Thank you for watching.